So last week we had news coming thick and fast and yesterday we had the AMA with Brian and Jason and it's very clear to me that this thing is now very real and the Vulcan blockchain is coming. So in this video today I want to just talk a little bit about my own personal uh, thoughts on my strategy on how I think I'm going to manage my personal portfolio of Vulcan. And of course, I'm in a bit of a mystery location. Where am I and what the heck am I doing here? Well, stick around and you will find out. In the meantime, let's go. Come on in, my dear friend, but I hope you've got your snow boots with you because this is the current view from my window. Yes, it's a little bit snowy. So I am in a mystery location. I'm in mystery country, not in the UK. I'm on my travels. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that when I've spoken about Vulcan. But in the meantime, I will just say, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own research. And if you're watching this and you're enjoying this content and you're not subscribed, then please do consider subscribing. It really supports my channel and I really appreciate it. So hit that button down below. And whilst you're there, why don't you give me a little cheeky like? Thank you. So let's get into it. My Vulcan strategy. Now, before I get into kind of a little bit more detail about my thinking, I think there's two very important principles that I'd just like to outline and certainly principles that I'm taking on board and are kind of my underlying foundations in terms of all of my thinking. Um, the first one is really about having a strategy. It, I think it's very important to have a strategy. It's, it's your roadmap, your own personal roadmap. Um, what are you going to do when the blockchain is launched, when you get those Vulcan in your wallet? And it doesn't matter whether you just have a bag of Vulcan, whether you have a full node, whether you have a light node, whether you have a mixture of all of those, it's really important that you have a strategy. But having said that, the strategy needs to be flexible enough that you're not kind of like a rabbit in headlights if things change. And we know the crypto environment is so changeable, it's so dynamic. There are very few givens actually. And of course the huge unknown in terms of Vulcan is what is gonna to happen to the price. So it's really important to have a strategy, but that strategy needs to be flexible. And the second thing that is always in my mind is when I'm thinking of figures, when I'm thinking of price action, when I'm thinking of, you know, taking profits out, I always, always calculate in the taxes that I'm going to have to pay. So obviously we know that every transaction on Vulcan will have a 5% uh, tax. So I always have that in mind. But also because I live in the UK and and um, obviously everything in crypto is, is really based on US dollars. So I always have in my mind the conversion rate from dollars to UK pounds. And then I always, always take into account the worst case scenario in terms of what I'm gonna have to pay as tax in the UK on any earnings that I have. And I would say if you're from the UK and you're watching this, I think it is quite unclear how the earnings certainly from nodes will be dealt with. So I am just kind of calculating in at least a 40% tax that I'm going to have to pay on anything that I earn. And I know that sounds extreme and ridiculous and that's fine, but for me, I do not ever want to be in a situation where I 
have withdrawn from Vulcan or any other crypto. I've, you know, kept some back for tax, but I haven't kept enough back. So I am completely over egging the pudding. And I know when I've spoken about this in the past, I've had some people saying, you'll never have to pay that, that much tax. Um, you, you're being a bit extreme there. But for me, this is part of my strategy. I just want to completely go to the nth degree in calculating in the potential deductions I will have to take out. And only then do I look at the amount as my profit. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Those are my two principles. Okay, so let's get into my thoughts on my personal uh, position. So I do have a full node and I do have a bag of Vulcan. Um, I've also been very clear from the start, and if you look back at my videos, you'll see this. I have two very clear objectives in what I need Vulcan to do for me. And they are quite simply, I want to earn a passive income and I want to build long-term wealth. As simple as that. So those are the two kind of things that are guiding what I'm going to do or what I intend to do when the blockchain launches. So I'm going to deal with the full node first. Let's get into that. The other thing just before I get into the node, I should probably say about strategy is I do have two versions of my strategy. One is let's call it a short-term strategy, and I'm thinking probably the next six months. And then I have a much longer-term strategy, which is a bit vaguer, but uh, still important to say there are two kind of versions of my strategy that kind of fit together. So let's talk about the node first. And I am seeing, certainly for the short term, my node as my key to passive income. Now, just to be very clear, I left my full-time job last year and since then I've been building up various passive income plays. Vulcan is potentially one of them, quite a major one, but I do have other things going on. Um, but I'm, I'm not talking about those other things now, I'm, I'm just solely talking about Vulcan in this video. So let's talk about the node first. Full node, um, just to remind you, um, that that node has been rebasing um, between the period 20th of November to 20th of January. And so I will have the node, which will obviously be earning, well, in three ways. So it'll be earning gas fees, it'll be earning fixed flex, and it will obviously still be rebasing. So that's the node. But also on launch, I will have the rebases from um, that kind of uh, testnet period. And those rebases will result in a bag of about 2,700-ish Vulcan. So I have spoken about this before, actually, in terms of my strategy. And my original strategy, when we had that very, very large APY, was just going to be to sell that bag of rebases, that 2,700, just to sell it at launch, um, and to take that profit. Now, since the change to the much lower APY, I've kind of changed my thought a little bit. And this is where, you know, I think a good example of where strategy has to be flexible. And really, it's led me to, um, to really feel that every single Vulcan is so precious now. And I think this is a mindset change that potentially a lot of people will have and will result in less selling on launch. I don't know. Um, obviously, that mixed with the fixed flex aspect as well. But anyway, we'll get to that. Um, so whereas before I was just going to sell that whole bag of rebases, I am changing that now. The way I'm kind of changing it is I know how much I kind of need to live on as a passive income, if you if you will between now and the next six months. And this is where my six month initial strategy comes in. And really it's that figure that I have in mind that will now dictate 
how much Vulcan I will sell on launch. Oh, when I say on launch, I mean within probably the first two to three weeks, depending on price. So I have a figure in mind that's very much based on my previous salary. It's, you know, what I use to run the house, pay the bills, do a bit of saving, etc. So I have that in mind and I have my bag of rebases. And now what I will be doing is, and I've already done this actually, calculating, depending on different price points of Vulcan, how much Vulcan I will have to sell in order to achieve what I need to achieve. So I've kind of turned my thinking around rather than I'm gonna sell this whole bag and see what it gets me. It's kind of, well, what do I need to achieve? Um, and what that will mean in terms of how much I need to sell. So I am hoping, and we'll have to see what the price does, but I'm really hoping that I don't have to sell that whole bag of Vulcan. And really, rather than selling the 2,700 or whatever it is, I want to sell between 1,500 and 2,000 Vulcan tops um, in that initial first few weeks period. Again, depending on the price, hopefully that will give me what I need as my passive income for the next six months. Obviously, the lower the price of Vulcan, the more Vulcan I'm going to have to sell. And it may be that I have to sell the whole lot. And I've, you know, I've done some calculations. If Vulcan, you know, gets to $21, then potentially selling 2,000 will give me what I need. Obviously, if it goes to 40, then I have to sell a lot less. But the, the node and the, and the selling of that initial bag is what I'm hoping is going to give me the passive income that I need um, in one shot rather than, you know, every week or every month. I want to take it um, out in that first few weeks and then have it there working for me as passive income. Why do I want to do that? You know, there, I've done a lot of thinking about this because, you know, actually it maybe make more sense to leave it there and work, you know, just take out a little bit of each month rather than taking out a big lot at the beginning. But the way my head works, I kind of, I want that in the bag as it were. I want to take out that, that initial amount so that I don't have to worry about what the price is going to do in that first six months. I take my initial out, I take my, my, what I need for my passive income. And it's kind of in my head, it's kind of, I can live now for the next six months and it doesn't matter what happens with the price. That's my thinking anyway. But then of course the node is still earning in those three ways that I said. So what am I gonna do with that? So that's the rebasing, the fixed flex and the gas fees. Well, again, the, there's a lot of unknowns in that depending on obviously the price of Vulcan, but mainly the volume on the blockchain. We don't know what what is going to happen there we know is probably going to be quite low to begin with and hopefully will build throughout that first six months or so so what am i going to do with with that income i'm just gonna let it sit let it ride let it build up and of course the more it builds up the better the fixed flex drawdown every day will be the better the rebases will be of course that's all dependent on whether that initial bag gives me what i need but this is my strategy. Get that passive income in terms of pull down at the beginning and then let the rest sit to build, to build throughout that first six months and then see what happens. So really my full node is my key to passive income, but I also have my bag of Vulcan and on the launch of mainnet, I will have approximately kind of, I think it's about 4,600. So not a massive bag, but I'm quite happy with it. I think, you know, I going into Sacrifice, I was in just within the top 1,000 holders. Um, so I'm not saying it's a huge bag, but equally I recognise that it is a significant bag of Vulcan that I've, I've managed to build up. And it's very simple. And my strategy on this hasn't changed because when I've spoken about strategy before, my 
Bag of Vulcan is always my key to building long-term wealth. And if all goes well with the node and my plan with the node, giving me the passive income, I am literally not going to touch the Bag of Vulcan. It's just going to build, the rebates are going to build. I think it's very important to say that I fully intend, if I do nothing else every day of my life, once Vulcan launches, I will be pulling down the flexed part of my income. Don't miss it, folks. Make a note, put an alarm on your phone, whatever you have to do. If you do nothing else before you eat and breathe every single day, you must pull down your flex part. You must hit that button, pay your little gas fee and earn. And that's what I'm going to be doing. That's a very, very important part of my, not just my Vulcan strategy, my life strategy going forward. I am not going to miss out on what is basically free money. So my Big, my, my bag of Vulcan is going to sit there, it's going to rebase, it's going to increase because of the flex and I'm just going to let it grow and I'm not going to touch it for at least six months. Why have I got six months in mind? It's basically because looking at my node, I really believe I can pull at least six months down in terms of um, passive income. But most importantly, I want to give the Vulcan blockchain time to grow. Um, I want more projects to come on board. I want the price to increase, fingers crossed with a fair wind. I want the volume to increase and I just want my bag of Vulcan to grow as the blockchain grows. And then after those initial that initial six months, I'm going back to the drawing board. I'm going to reassess where I am, where my node is, what income I'm getting from that, where my bag of Vulcan is, how much it's grown with the rebases and the flex, which is the big unknown, what it's worth in terms of the price of Vulcan at that point. And I will then, as I say, go back to the drawing board. Will I then take passive income on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? Where will I draw that passive income from? I'm, I, in my mind, my full node is my key to passive income, both in six months and the longer term. But will that be the case when, when we get to six months? So basically what I'm saying is my six month strategy is in my head. My, my beyond six months is kind of vague, but I know that I need to reassess when we get to that point. So that's, sorry, that was a bit long winded, but uh, that's my kind of thinking on how I'm going to deal with my income from my node, but also my bag of Vulcan, my little strategy. And I hope that's been useful to you. I know it's very tailored to me and what I hold. And you might not hold a node. You might have a smaller bag of Vulcan, whatever it is. But really what I'm trying to get across here is the thinking about the planning the roadmap for yourself. What, what does Vulcan mean to you? Is it going to give you an income? Is it going to give you long-term savings? What is it going to do for you? What do you need it to do? Have a think about it. And just really, if you haven't already, really start to strategize what it means for you. Okay, so let's go on to where I am. So as I say, I'm not in the UK. I have traveled on a flight. So yesterday we went to Luton Airport, which is one of the smaller London airports. And we caught a plane to, now where are we going? Where is it? To Bucharest, to Bucharest in Romania. And here we are on the flight and we couldn't quite believe when we were descending to land the snow. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's quite chilly here, let me say. <laughs> but it's gorgeous. So why am I here? Well, actually, it's nothing to do with me. I'm just here with the current Mr. Chalk, <laughs> who, um, if you've watched my videos before, I've said, but he's actually a conductor. He conducts symphony orchestras. And last summer, he came to uh, Romania and took part in an international competition, which he won. And his part of his prize was to come back and to conduct 
the Philharmonic Orchestra, which is here in Brashov. Now, Brashov is about, I think it's about, ah, oh, it's probably over 100 miles north of Bucharest. So we landed in Bucharest and then uh, were driven here to Brashov. And we are here for the next few days until today's Monday. We're here until Friday. Then we start to make our way up to a place called Sachimare, which is actually about, well, it's over 300 miles from here, um, right up north in the north of Romania by the Hungarian border. Um, and we're going there because Simon, my husband, um, is also conducting an orchestra there next week. So he's got two engagements in Romania, one in Brasov, one in Sachimare. And so we're spending the next two weeks in Romania, which is fantastic. And of course, the nice thing for me is I can just be a conductor's wife. And let me tell you, that's a very nice thing because you get treated very, very well. Um, and so I'll be kind of going along to rehearsals and, and just being there for Simon, supporting him, uh, but also obviously going to the concerts and meeting all of his colleagues whilst we're here. So that's lovely. Um, but the really great thing is, and I did make a video, gosh, several months ago now about being a digital nomad. Um, of course, I can do whatever I need to do making these videos, but the other passive income things that I'm doing, all I need is the internet. And of course, that's most places in the world, right? So I can, you know, pack up and now come with Simon and travel with Simon um, wherever he goes. And he, he does travel quite a lot. So I think I'll be doing more of this as, as we go forward, but I just need my laptop and that's it. So it's fantastic. And let me tell you, the ability to just pack up and go is amazing. And not having to go into your boss and say, hey, can I have some time off? And then the whole stress of, you know, I just found taking time off from work incredibly stressful because <laughs> the amount of work you had to do before you took the annual leave was breathtaking. Um, so now I don't have any of that. And so, you know, if part of what you want to do is, you know, when Vulcan launches is if one of your aspirations is to give up your day job, then let me tell you, it's the best thing that I ever, ever did. Now, if Vulcan doesn't work out, then I might have to reassess all of that. <laughs> but I am incredibly optimistic about this whole thing um, that I will be able to earn enough from Vulcan to sustain me in my digital nomad life, allow my other passive income plays to build up so that I kind of have a portfolio of passive income from lots of different sources, Vulcan being one of them, but many other bits and pieces. And again, I've threatened in the past to talk about those other things. Um, so maybe I'll do a video about that in the future, but this is all about Vulcan at the moment. So um, I'm gonna be here for the next two weeks. So um, aren't you looking, you know, I've, I've taken you to, where have I taken you now? I've taken you on my summer holiday to Italy. I took you to Dubai. I took you to Ireland at Christmas and now you're in Romania with me. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying my travels as much as I am. But I am going to go. But I must just say, um, I did say in my last video, I do have somebody from the community joining me here in Romania. This person is coming on Wednesday. I am very excited and will be joining me for a live stream later this week. So please do look out for that. But for now, I am going to say goodbye and thank you for watching my video. And as always, my dear Vulcans, I will say live long in prosperity and cheers. Live a life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray, all I need are some better days.